Okay, so now we're going to talk about the ITDOs for Chapter 13, Project Stakeholder Management. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. So there's four processes in this chapter. One's in initiating, one's in planning, one's in executing, and one's in monitoring and controlling. So when we're identifying stakeholders and in initiating, we're identifying and classifying those who could be affected by the project. And then plan stakeholder engagement, we're developing strategies for how to engage with those stakeholders during the project. And then as we manage stakeholder engagement, we're actually communicating with stakeholders and addressing issues as they arise. And then we're going to monitor those relationships with our stakeholders over time and make adjustments as needed. Okay, so identifying stakeholders. We're identifying and classifying those who could be affected by the project. <clears throat> so here are our inputs, our tools and techniques, and our outputs. Now, the inputs are going to be the project charter, because that may include some stakeholders, as well as some of our business documentation, like a business case and a benefits management plan. That may include information about our stakeholders. And then in the project management plan, you're going to see a communications management plan and a stakeholder engagement plan may be sources of how we work with our stakeholders. They're going to have some project documents and uh, agreements, like contracts or statements of work, that could also include stakeholders. So a lot of these could be sources of stakeholder names and details about them, or how to engage with those stakeholders. Okay, we can have some tools for identifying stakeholders, questions and surveys, brainstorming, stakeholder analysis, which we'll talk about, analyzing documentation that we've created to see what stakeholders are there, and then mapping out our stakeholders perhaps. Okay, so let's focus in on stakeholder analysis. So these are, uh, we're going to use this to classify our stakeholders. We identify them and classify them because some may need more time and attention than others. So here are a few ways to classify our stakeholders. We could use the power and interest grid, the power influence grid, the influence impact, gr impact grid, and the salience model. Um, and in the other video, it's going to show you, provide an explanation of each of those. And the stakeholder register, which is the key output, is going to have basic identi identification information, their name, organization, location, role, etc. Also some assessment information, what their major requirements are, their expectations, how they could influence things. And then a stakeholder classification. Are they internal or external? Are they supporter? Are they neutral? Are they resistor? Or so on. And also, it could be um, include information about from the classification models that we just used here, the power interest grid, the salience model, and so on. So those are some of the key information that's going to be on our stakeholder register. And if you look at our inputs and outputs, you'll see the stakeholder register is the key output. Okay, now let's talk about planned stakeholder engagement. We're developing strategies to engage with our stakeholders during the project because we understand that our stakeholders could have a significant impact either positively or negatively, so I want to make sure we engage them appropriately. So here are the inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs. Remember, with a lot of these, well, actually all of these, plan blank processes, you're going to see the project management plan as an input, and the individual plan, in this case, the stakeholder engagement plan, as an output. Okay. And then you're going to have various tools to help you determine how to best engage your stakeholders, uh, some benchmarking, Decision making, you're going to be prioritizing and ranking your stakeholders, and perhaps a stakeholder assessment matrix to kind of figure out who you ought to be focusing in on. A, a lot of these are going to help you kind of understand how to engage your stakeholders, how often they need engagement, and maybe who is most important. There's going to be lots of potential stakeholders on your project, but you want to make sure you're spending your time and your energy and addressing those that could influence it. Um, or that are funding it, or whatever, that are most important. So here's your stakeholder engagement plan. Let's kind of talk about what it's going to include. It identifies how to engage our stakeholders, builds upon the stakeholder register, and documents levels and methods of engagement. So who are we going to focus our energy on first, and how are we going to engage with them? And We want them to be involved especially if they're a critical stakeholder that could influence the outcome of the project, either positively or negatively. And then we're going to manage stakeholder engagement, communicating with our stakeholders and addressing issues as they arise. 
So here are inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs. Um, as inputs, you have your project management plan, the most important of which, in this case, is the stakeholder engagement plan. Some other project documents, like your change log, your issues log, your lessons learned register. It could be things that you're working with your stakeholders on and discussing with them. If you're trying to address issues with your stakeholders, obviously you're going to need the issue log. The example we used in class is that of the Dakota Akis Pipeline project. If they're trying to work with the Native American Indian tribes and engage with them to resolve the protests and issues on the project, they'll probably or could pull up the issue log and talk about some of the concerns that the Native American Indian tribes have. And then as you engage with your stakeholders, you got to have a solid communication and interpersonal skills to help resolve issues, especially on sensitive topics. You may have ground rules as well. And the outputs are going to be change requests, uh, probably which is the most important, and also an issue log. If you're working with your stakeholders and they're requesting changes, they're thinking maybe that something's not going as planned or something's not, uh, or they'd like to see things done differently, they may be submitting change requests to, to make that happen. And then an issue log. You might be making updates to the issue log as you work with them. As the issue log, again, as we engage with our stakeholders, we often identify and resolve issues. So we're updating that log. And change requests. As we engage with our stakeholders, they may request changes on the project. Okay, now let's talk about monitoring stakeholder engagement. It's monitoring and adjusting plans for how we engage with our stakeholders, especially if they feel like things aren't going as planned or things aren't working out between us. Okay, so here are the inputs, the tools and techniques, and outputs. Now, like a lot of these monitoring processes, you have work performance data coming in and work performance information and change requests coming out. Because you're taking the data that you've, get, that you've gathered during the project about, um, and it, a lot of this could, it could be feedback from stakeholders in this case, but it's oftentimes how much you're actually spending, how long things are actually taking, uh, what scope actually got accomplished. That's data, and you're going to take that and turn it into useful information. So based on that, are we ahead of schedule or behind schedule? And maybe we submit it, need to submit a change request to make some adjustments to get ourselves back on track. Um, let's see. And then, again, as an input, you're going to see the project management plan. Because remember, you're always comparing your plan against what actually happened. So the plan, the project management plan, against the work performance data. Then again, you're going to have information and change requests coming out. And so as we monitor the engagement of our stakeholders, we could use a variety of things, alternatives analysis, a root cause analysis, stakeholder analysis, voting. Uh, maybe there's some cases where as we're going out throughout the project, we can't get an issue resolved with the stakeholder, so we have to find some alternative solution. Maybe that's where alternatives analysis comes into place. And we could need communication skills, feedback, and presentations to the stakeholders to um, show that we're making progress or improvement, and then just other interpersonal skills, active listening, cultural awareness, leadership, and so on. Um, it takes certainly soft skills to be able to work through and address issues with our stakeholders as they arise.